whoa. I know that was so riveting and exciting. I could feel it. I, I'm going to tell you, Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob, and y'all cut me loose. I could have said sneezy, dopey, and grumpy, and y'all would have all agreed by the time I got to the end of this. Man, my brother and sister in Christ, it's all about the future. That's what Gene would tell you. He would tell you it's all about the future. It's the 1950s, San Bernardino, California. He said, man, his family life, man, it, it was just tough, tumultuous. Just wasn't a good thing. He'll tell you that, man, even though his dad kind of had his own little newspaper, did a little editing, a little printing, his mom was a quintessential mom. Gene will tell you he had one brother, but by the age of 10, he said life went south. He said, my folks got divorced. It was just, it just wasn't good. He said, I started doing a little petty crime. I got up thrown in jail, steal a little bit here, steal a little bit there. He said, oh, man, I go to high school. I don't even finish. He said, I get out of high school and I got to go do something. So he's going to become a Marine. At the age of 16, he lies to get in. Four and a half years, he's a field radio operator in the Marines. He comes back out. He just knows he's got to do something. He's got to eat. He's got to have some type of future. So he decides to go back to California. He gets to California and decides, well, look, I can be an actor. Anybody can. So he decides, what the heck? As a result of it, man, he goes in there and he sits down and he goes to what they call the Pasadena, I think it's called the Pasadena Playhouse. This is where you go to learn how to act. After the first semester, things aren't looking good. He gets to the second semester when they're deciding whether you should go on or not. The teacher walks in and says, we have a tie for the least likely to succeed. One is Dustin Hoffman. And the other one was him. He couldn't believe what he just heard. Least likely to succeed. To this day, if you go to the school, his name is in the scroll for the lowest grades ever given by them. As a result of it, he said, man, I'm just trying to make ends meet. He said, I decided to move to New York. He said, Dustin Hoffman comes with me. We rent an apartment. He sleeps in the kitchen. I sleep in the family room. He said, I did any job I could get. I worked for Howard Johnson's. I was like a, like a soda pop guy. He said, I uh, worked the door at some of the hotels. He said, worst job ever. I worked in the Chrysler building from midnight to 6 a.m. polishing the furniture. That's what I did. He said, one day it was so bad. I go from working at Howard Johnson's and who walks in? The head of the guy that was the head of the Pasadena Playhouse. You know what he tells him? He tells him, go figure. You're never gonna amount to anything anyway. He leaves that day to go do his night job, a doorman at a hotel. Who walks in? His Marine Sergeant. He said, I knew you bleep, bleep, bleep would never turn out to anything. He said, it was the lowest point in my life. He said, it was because now I am dead. I'm, it's, it's the past. It's tied to me like a, like a ball and chain. Then all of a sudden he says, man, I just, I've got to do something. I can't, I, I've got to prove these people wrong. He said, it's, it's, it can't be about the past. It's, it can't be. There's got to be some break somewhere, somewhere in the future. And as a result, he gets a couple plays in New York. And then all of a sudden, he gets a chance to be in another play called Route 66. And then he gets in another movie called Any Wednesday. And then all of a sudden, he gets another break. He gets in the Poseidon Adventure. And then all of a sudden, man, he gets another break and people start looking his way and he starts to decide, well, man, we, there, there's possible work out there. Maybe I can make a living. And next thing you know, he gets another little job here and there. And next thing you know, he gets a play and he gets in a movie called Hoosiers. And then he gets in another one called Theft. And then he gets in another one called Unforgiven. And then he gets into another one, um, and I plumb forgot, and I don't even remember the name that he was in. Man, my brother and sister in Christ, I'm trying to think because about six of you know who, I, who it is and the rest of you don't. Man, he's in Bonnie and Clyde. My brother and sister in Christ, 
you know him as Gene Hackman. Thank God some of you know who I'm talking about. My brothers and sisters in Christ, you know they interviewed him afterwards. And as a result, they asked him, you know, the past was pretty brutal for you. Why is it you, you didn't, why didn't you just didn't cow, cow down and just call it good? He said, man, I just, he said, he, I just couldn't let that be. He said, you know, I, I really believe this. He said, I believe the words by a man named Warren are exactly true. He said, I believe it with all my heart. I may be a product of my past but I don't have to be imprisoned by it. He said, it's all about the future. He said, do you ever have any regrets? He said, yes, turning down the job for Indiana Jones. But he says, that's the past. My brother and sister Christ, it's all about the future. That is exactly that gospel. My brother and sister Christ, that whole genealogy was to prove to the Jews that if Christ came from the line of David, and David came from the line of several women who were prostitutes. That he can make all things new. It's where you and I go from here. Now stop, you need to make sure you understand. If you lived in the day of the Jewish people back in their day, this is just how life is. When the good Lord fed 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish, the 5,000 is only the men. They didn't count the women. Hence, it would have been 10,000 men, women, and probably 15,000 men, women, and children. So when they put four women in this genealogy, most of the Jewish men cannot argue. Why? Because three of them fall prior to King David. And David is the quintessential king. He is, Dave, he is God's chosen one. So therefore, if the future of David looks bright, how much brighter would it look for the one that they now call the Messiah? My brothers in Christ, did you notice only two people had titles? David was the king, and Christ is the Messiah. My brothers and sisters in Christ, he's trying to tell you that it's all about the future. Now stop, you're first century Jew. You need to understand this. When Mary is betrothed to Joseph, she's already engaged to him when the angel appears. That is that one year time frame from the minute of their engagement. Joseph has one year to get their house in order so that on the day that they get married and they process with candles by those who have lit lamps to their house, they're already engaged. For her to have told the angel, Gabriel, that the Holy Spirit will overshadow and you will bear a child, and she says, how can this be? For I do not know man. She must have already known that she would remain ever virgin, hence why the angel called her full of grace. The angel called her by her title, not by her name. My brothers in Christ, Mary must have already made the proclamation. I don't know man. I'm not going to know him in a year. So even though you hear the word at the very end of that gospel, that Mary did not have relations with Joseph until she bore him a, a child, please remember, you and I would have been reading that in Greek. And as a result of it, the Greek word for until is heos, which means that no matter what happens after the fact, doesn't change the fact. In other words, I only want you to focus on this point backwards. Anything past it is irrelevant because it's still the same. Nothing changed in the Greek language. So when they say until, they just don't say anything past it is irrelevant. My brother in Christ, I tell you this, because it's the mis most misunderstood scriptural part in all of our, in our traditions, that somehow Mary had many children. Let me help you with that. My brother and sister in Christ, it is against the law for you women to have lived with anybody other than your husband or your children. It is against the law for you to live with anybody other than your husband or their, your children. If you live with somebody else other than those groups, you will be subjected to 40 lashes. So when the good Lord is on the cross and says, woman, behold your son, son, behold your mother, to John, whose brother is James, who is to another mother, for him to give his mother to a man that is not her husband or their siblings, his siblings, he just broke the law, he subjected her to 40 lashes, and he broke the fourth commandment. My brother and sister in Christ, you need to understand that. 
because your future and my future depends on it. Go back in scripture. All of our best players or people that understood the future begins and ends with Jesus Christ. Man, can you imagine what it must have been like to meet Saul before he becomes Paul? Remember, he is, he is beating and killing Christians. Oh yeah, okay, as a Jew, here's your decision if you get caught. Your decision is I prefer to be beheaded. You can put me on fire. You can stone me. Or you can just put me into a sack and again light me on fire. Those are your options. When Paul comes to get you, there's no Miranda rights. There's no court. He's bringing you back to have you killed. So for him to go to Saul to Paul, to give up his 401k, to give up his position as Pharisee, man, he must have believed that the future was Jesus Christ. Can you imagine if you're Mary Magdalene? Do you know according to tradition, she approached our Savior three separate times? She had all seven demons. She's the only person in Scripture that was possessed by all seven demons. Pride, anger, gluttony, lust, avarice, sloth, and envy. Yet she's the first to see the risen Christ. No matter how far you fall, Mary Magdalene taught you and I, no matter how bad your past is, it doesn't matter. It's only where you and I go from here forward. It only cares about the future. Can you imagine if you're Longinus? You spend your entire life as a Roman centurion. You finally get the job as the centurion. You are Pilate's right-hand man. Pilate would not have lasted a month without Longinus on guard. Everybody wants to work for Longinus. He is a soldier's soldier. He doesn't take anything, he doesn't give it, but man, you better give the respect because he controls it. And at the end of the day, for him to stand up in front of everybody, God and country, and say, truly, that man was the son of God. My brother in Christ, he must have believed that the future was Jesus Christ. Do you know the same centurion soldiers that were with him at the crucifixion? When, Pi when he made that proclamation, he left. It took him almost two years to find him, preaching the Gospels the same centurions that were around the crucifixion. And when they caught up with him, they finally recognized that he changed a lot, but it was him, and they beheaded him. My brother and sister in Christ, here you and I sit 2,000 years later. Do you and I understand that the future of where we sit today begins and ends with Jesus Christ? The past has nothing on you. How much of your day, how much of this past week have you spent worried about yesterday? How much of the day did you spend in yesterday, last week, last month, last year? How much of your time do you still spend about that argument you had with somebody? How much time do you spend today worrying about that conversation with family or friends? About the person you work with? Might have been a former spouse, a boyfriend, a girlfriend. Something that happened in college or high school. How much of your day yesterday is eating up today? How much of your life are you going to walk backwards, hitting everything in your path because you simply refuse to cut it loose and let it go? My brother in Christ, do you not understand? The evil one wants you to live in the past. He wants to put that thought in your head and force you to walk backwards through life, hitting everything in your path. Do you ask yourself why the rear view mirror is so small and the windshield is so large? Because he only wants you to go forward. The good Lord is trying to tell you, all of my best players are the ones that have learned to cut it loose. Would I have a Peter today, a rock to build my church? Even after he denied me? Even after he, he tried to walk on water, albeit though he did? Is this the same guy to cut a man's ear off? Peter had every reason in the world to just bury himself in the ground and cut it loose. You know, they say he cried so much that he actually had creases in his cheek long into the year 66, 30 something years later. My brother and sister Christ, don't you understand? The evil one hates you. And the fact that you're celebrating the birth of the Messiah, a new beginning and a new future. Don't you understand he's gonna take every chance he gets to get up into your head, your thoughts. It's the most expensive real estate in the world. And we give it away freely. 
We allow him to roam there all day, every day, and twice on Sunday. My brothers in Christ, what I'm trying to tell you is, everything is from this day forward. What has happened has happened. It has no bearing on you, no bearing on what will come of you. Do you not understand you're a child of God? Do you not understand he made you in his own image? Do you not understand he knew your name in your mother's womb? He knew your name in your mother's womb. And you think he's going to cut you loose and let you go? You think he's just going to forget that you've called? You think he's just going to ignore your prayers? All prayers are heard. All prayers are heard. You may not get the answer you want in the manner that you want. They're all heard and ultimately all answered. What I'm asking you to do is cut the past loose and let it go. It's where you go from this point forward. And I'll leave you with this. You can do nothing about the past. It's got no string on you. It doesn't define you. It doesn't characterize you. Your name is not tied to it. My brother and sister Christ, the past is the past. It might be a life lesson, but it is not an imprisonment. You can do nothing about the past and you can do everything about the future with Jesus Christ. My brother Christ, your future is brighter than you know, as long as Christ is the one that's leading it. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please stand.